Should medical students quit medicine after graduating? That's the topic of discussion today. You're joined by myself, Ams Chowdhury and Abdul Rayyad. We're both podcasters and the co-founders of Peer. Let's take it away. Abdul, what's your thought on this? So I'm going to kick it off. So basically, I was on Twitter the other day and I saw a tweet which caught the attention of many people. So the tweet basically said a friend of a medical student who's also a medic mm. has secured a graduate job yeah. for once he finishes medical school mm-hmm. and it was three times the salary of F1, meaning this individual isn't going to become a doctor. He isn't going to do foundation training. He's going to go straight into this job, which he secured while at medical school. And it got a lot of attention. I thought, you know what? It might be something worth discussing, kind of sharing our thoughts on the matter. Mm. So I'll throw it back at you. Mm. Do you think medical students should graduate and do foundation training or should they do the degree and do something else afterwards? Now, for the purpose of retention, right? I know a lot of people disappear after a couple of minutes. I'm going to give you the answer and that's no, right? And if you want to know the reasons, carry on watching. So yeah, I'll tell you, there's actually three points at which you can quit medicine yeah. technically if you if you wanted to quit right and we've had these questions posted to us since creating that hoo-ha with our last video all right so we've had a few questions from medical students saying should they quit and some of them are in year one they've just started medicine all right they're asking should they quit already the next uh, point you can quit essentially is after medical school before foundation years which is the main topic of today and the third point you can quit is essentially some way through training usually after f2 or be it midway through higher tier training right so the question of should you quit i think it's a quite frankly no until you've reached f2 at the bare minimum i'll tell you why though medicine as a degree right you have to look at it as a degree and not just a pathway that you're on a treadmill and at the other end of the um, treadmill or the tunnel, you become a doctor, right? Say, for example, today, let me put you in a scenario. If you went to, say, Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, University of Manchester, Leeds, whatever, yeah, and you were studying geography, what are your expectations? By studying geography, are you, are you planning on becoming, I don't know, a weather person or... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what what what. But what what would be your expectations if I now sent you onto a geography course? What would you come out with at the, at the other end with? A degree in geography, mm-hmm. with hopefully to work in the field, to work in the space of geography. But where do they mostly go? Where do where do most graduates from economics, geography, history, English? Where where are they ending up? I don't even know. All these big corporate companies, isn't corporate it? Companies, yeah. exactly. Why do corporate companies take them on? I think, you know, university, certain degree of education, discipline, work ethic. Mm. I believe, you know, a degree kind of teaches you basic principles that show that you have in it what will make you a good worker, per se, to the corporate world or the corporate boss, I guess. Yes. So the skills, essentially talking about the skills that university um, teaches you, exposes you to the environment and all the extra things that you might do at university right so if you go to university with the expectation for example that you're going to study you're going to learn analytical skills being able to communicate being able to negotiate being able to close deals being able to complete applications being able to socialize etc etc that's what the employer is looking for the employer isn't strictly looking at what degree you've got and if you look at some of the corporate applications i've seen two one in any degree and that's it yeah, there yeah, is yeah. no specification. Yeah, like people that do music and art and literacy and whatever end up working in asset management in banks. Exactly, exactly. So now I might be biased, but I think medicine is the ultimate degree you can get. It's a long degree, right? But in our youth, we should be investing into ourselves. Do you agree with that? 100%. Like, I regret when I did a summer job, when I spent 40 hours a week doing a summer job, mm-hmm. I could have invested into myself, right? Yeah. So... You studying five years of a medical degree, the medical degree gives you so much. Yeah, give analytical skills, being able to write, being able to debate, communicate, build rapport. It goes on and on and on. But then you also have five years to invest in yourself mm. for whatever you want to do after. The reason why I say don't quit medicine is because the degree is incredible. It teaches you so much. And it's a time period where you will never get that back. Can you go now? Mm turn back time and spend five years investing in yourself without having to pay bills and stuff no way you can't do that 
But I, as a medical student, you can. You're, you're, and guess what? You're also amongst a very, very powerful network. Yeah. Like, I feel if I went anywhere else, I wouldn't be in this network that I'm in now where I can talk to people who are, let's be honest, out of my league in, in terms of social class, mm. right? Um, so my answer is do not quit through medical school. The question of now post-medical school, what are the reasons for why that person didn't go into foundation year training? What do you think some of those reasons are? So obviously the tweet didn't mention that. It just mentioned that massive fat statement or whatever it is. Obviously, let's be honest, salary is a big factor. Mm. You know, if you have the opportunity to earn three times the salary of a different job, mm. in any, outside of medicine, you'll take it, right? Let's yeah. say you're applying to be an accountant or a lawyer or a banker and one bank offers you one salary and a different bank offers you three times the salary, you're going to go to the third one, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing I think which is becoming more prominent now is I think medical students are a bit more aware of life as a doctor mm -hmm. or a junior doctor because of social media. Yeah. And I think that's influencing their decisions in terms of what to expect post-graduating. And I know a lot of them even the TikTok released, even people in first, second year, they're worried about the NHS. They're worried about life as a junior doctor. Whereas when we were medical students, we couldn't wait to become doctors. Absolutely. I think we were oblivious though. Like, yeah, of course, I agree. The schooling system in this country, it doesn't... For example, you Google... When I, I did this as a 16-year-old, I Googled the salary of doctors, account, etc. They were all big inflated yeah. figures. So I thought, all right, that's, that's cool. That's what I'm going to be earning. Then you suddenly realize, hold on, there's a training pathway that's different. Yeah. In you become an accountant after 13, 14 exams, whilst it takes you eight to fifteen years to become a consultant or whatever. Um, so then it starts to vary. And then taxation, the student yeah. loan system, how mortgages are given. So you're given for the do people know that they give 4.5 times your salary? You're not yeah, exactly. you're not you're taught these that. things. And if you're on a training program where your base rate is, let's say, 40k 50k whatever it is london houses are above half a mil yeah. houses okay not flats houses right who, who teaches you that no one teaches. so we were i think we were oblivious to that i think it's ignorance is bliss i think for us mm. from the background we came from mm. it was good in a sense you don't want to worry about things too early in advance and kind of cloud your mindset cloud your vision mm -hmm. obviously it's good to have insight but knowing us is like you don't want to worry too much oh i'm gonna to have to pay with this tax i'm not gonna be able yeah, to afford true. this and that you just want to get through the system innocently whereas the new generation of medics they're a bit more aware of the system they're a bit more of the culture mm -hmm. there's a lot of complaining on social media on instagram and twitter where it may be whereas i don't think we were exposed mm -hmm. so going back to the question is if someone were to come to you now and say, I'm just about to graduate medical school, mm -hmm. I can either become a foundation doctor mm -hmm. or I can work as a consultant in one of these companies in the healthcare space. Mm -hmm. What are the pros or cons or what would you advise to that individual? So this is a scenario. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say to that individual? Mm -hmm. So if people know me well, yeah. one thing you, sh you people should know me as is that I'm strategic in my decisions, right? It's, it's why we work together. You've got more of a, I'll be, I'll, I'll dive in, I'll take the risk. Whilst I try to eliminate a lot of the risks that I take on board, right? So if you take a strategic route to it all, right? If you study, A, if you got into medicine, I think you should complete it because of, as I said before, everything that the degree itself offers you. It offers you time amongst everything else, right? The second thing is after five years, why would you not do in my opinion why would you not do two years for that registration period exactly right and i tell you why because when you're registered if you've completed f1 and f2 you are a you are deemed to be a safe competent junior doctor yeah at that level yes. so let's explain that point because i never knew that so mm -hmm. i assumed as soon as you graduate you're fully qualified licensed doctor in the uk mm -hmm. but that's not true you get provisional registration yep after your first year foundation training and you're fully qualified after fyc so the second year foundation training exactly so for yeah anyone listening you are not a fully qualified doctor after you graduate you have the mbbs degree 
But I feel after two years, you get that certificate. I think GMC give it. I don't know who gives it, basically. Yeah, yeah. You've got your full license, essentially, yeah. to practice at any NHS hospital. Yeah. Let's get it right. You can't do any private work until you're a consultant. Exactly. So no one can say, oh, but can I not do consult? Uh, can I not do private work? You cannot do any private work until you're a consultant. And a basically, you've got your... What is it? What is it at CCT. the end of? CCT, that's it. You've got your CCT. That certificate is recognised internationally as well, I believe. Mm, that you're fully qualified. Yeah, yeah. And even the F2 one. Do mm. you want you get certificate? But yeah, going back to your point. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, full licence. So, I'll tell you why. Now, strategy-wise. Strategy-wise, right? I talked about on my LinkedIn about how you can safely venture out. Sometimes, for me, I can't just give up, jump ship taking a massive risk because if it falls on its face yeah. right too many people around me including myself will suffer yeah. that's the problem so say right now you said give up everything like fall flat on its face it might fall flat on it and just dive in completely with nothing right i can't do that because too many people will suffer around me i'm responsible for people right so strategically right once you complete your f2 uh, registration f2 training right you can locum that is incredibly incredibly it's a powerful resource to mm. you to venture out because what you have now you have an ability to basically work as a freelance doctor pretty much pick up shifts where you're competent you can earn money whilst creating a lot of free time exactly. to work on wherever you want to go or the other thing after f2 take a whole year out go and work in a corporate field exactly, yeah. Go and see what it's like, and you can return a lot easier. Yeah, I right. Agree. Um, yeah. So it's the, my opinion is you shouldn't be if you've gotten to the end to final year, mm. right? You should not be leaving. You should be doing F one and F two. Obviously, the caveat is if Facebook came to me at final year and said, "Here's one hundred and twenty grand, mm. work with us," I probably will take that. If if a lucrative company comes to me and I can see a, a progression in my job scale with them, I can see myself probably taking that. But it didn't come to me. I was never in that position. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's good to mention that. I think we've never been in a position where there was an offer on the table. Mm. We're speaking from a position of just going through the system. So we don't know what the mentality is. We don't know what it's like to have someone knocking on your door saying this is a better work-life balance this is a better so this yeah. is better career progression and you're going to earn three times your base salary exactly. so we don't know that experience but from my experience and i have met people that have left medicine straight after graduating into mm -hmm. analyst jobs is the difference of exposure or what medicine is like as a medical student is so very different to what it's like as a doctor mm -hmm. the skill set and acquisition of skills as a medical student is very different to what it is as a doctor because now you have real responsibilities mm. you're treating real patients and you're developing real clinical experience mm. and if you do want to work for a corporate company i personally feel those corporate companies value a doctor with real experience mm. far more than someone who's just graduated fresh out of medical school i agree i agree and i think if you're talking from a strategic point mm. why not equip yourself in the best case scenario where you've gone through med school you've got a few years of medicine under your belt mm -hmm. then you can venture out and go and do whatever you want and like you said it gives you the safety of locuming you can pick and choose where you want to work how you want to work mm -hmm. and the salary from a locum doctor is obviously the same as a base salary of a training f1 and f2 mm -hmm. so those are the main things i would say to someone who is in that position obviously scenarios and things may be different mm -hmm. or they may have like the quit genius guys so what do you think about their story so they were imperial they started quit genius um they had a good traction they were getting they were moving along they were quite fine their journey right mm -hmm. they didn't do foundation training either right mm -hmm. and i don't know if there was before they were on to welcome or not but yeah imagine you're in their shoes what would you do in that situation so First of all, hands down, Quit Genius, you guys are freaking awesome, all right? But yeah, no, the Quit Genius um, situation is unique, though, when I look at it, yeah. right? When you look at it, they did incredible things during the medical school. They had a startup that was pretty much flourishing, and it was supported by the Imperial College as well. They were mm -hmm. fully sort of uh, getting behind them. Um, and I think, you know, when you've got a startup, 
that's starting to flourish, right? Let's be honest, like right now we've dropped everything for peer. Mm-hmm. And it's because you can see the opportunity, you know what time investment into the company will bring. Right. This is something you're working on your own. Remember, you're not working for a corporate company. Mm-hmm. Right now, you've got no salary, yeah, right? You've got nothing, but you're willing to put your time, effort, sweat, everything into it. And I think Quit Genius were doing something special at the time where the opportunity was it was too big of an opportunity to turn down. Yeah. I think the and, opportunity cost. And they knew where they were heading. And let's not forget the, the caveat to if you don't go into foundation training, but you complete medical school is that you can return and do your foundation years. Yeah. You can you can come back at any point. Again, another reason why you should not quit during medical school. Yeah, you can quit after. Yeah. Um, so I think if I if I try to sit into the minds of the quit genius guys, right? They finished medical school. If God forbid, if anything happened to quit genius, they can always return. Yeah. They can always return because they're still qualified doctors. I can see them never returning now. Obviously, they've flown yeah. off, man. <laughs> That's a different situation. So then, so this it breaks it down, right? So the scenario is you're a medical student, you've graduated, you've got this offer on the table to work for a corporate company for a big, big salary, mm. or you have the opportunity to build and grow your startup that's already flourishing, which I think is a very different situation. And having maybe been in the startup game a bit for a while now, maybe in that situation, then I would think twice. Yeah, I agree. If I know that this startup is flourishing and there's an opportunity cost, meaning I need to do this, I need to get ahead on this startup right now, otherwise I'm going to miss the ball, I'm going to miss the opportunity, mm-hmm. then fair enough. Yeah, but exactly. if you're not ex- working on an existing product or a business or something mm-hmm. and you're entertaining other things, then maybe do the foundation training. Mm-hmm. But we're old school, people are thinking in very different ways. And like I said in our previous videos, maybe the perception of foundation training by medical students is a true one that we weren't exposed to so we're just speaking from old time's sake and they basically have enough information to make that informed decision where it's mm-hmm. like do you not think medical students are smart enough to see what the situation is now mm-hmm. and play devil's advocate to be like do you know what i'm going to be smart why am i going to waste two years why not start my career in whatever sector i want to do a bit earlier because and I'm making this informed decision because of the things I see on Twitter, on Instagram, social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I've speak, spoken to lots of doctors. What about that scenario? So you're saying if I can get enough information, can I just quit? As in after graduating and not going to foundation training. So let's say you feel as an individual. Mm. So let's say you're a medical student right now. Yeah. You're finally a medical student. You're about to graduate, mm. and in this moment in time, right, mm. from the stuff that you've seen on social media. Would you go and do foundation training? Forget about your medical experience as a doctor. You're you're just yeah. about to graduate from King's College again. Yeah. So if I've got the so no no, no startup no 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 startup yeah no startup. It you work in a bank yeah. for three times the salary. Yeah. Or you go do foundation training in some random city for like whatever the salary is now. Uh, hands down, man. Uh, again, taking a very strategic route to this complete F one F two. The power. The freedom um, and the safety net of being a fully registered doctor, fully skilled, as in you've learned the tricks of the trade, you know how to be a safe, um, competent doctor, is 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 too great to turn down. You're talking about a corporate company coming along and offering offering you, say, um, 80, 90 grand. Not even that, let's say 50, 60 grand, which is a base salary, right? After looking, you can make that easy. And guess what? You'll have more time to work on your startup, your venture. You can you can then decide, I'm going to go work for a corporate company. Let me put another um, caveat to all of this, all right? So, Dr. Ali Bassoon and Dr. Nadine hit the nail on the head when they said this. If you're thinking about, especially being an entrepreneur, right? Like, so you can't just sit there and say, I want to be an entrepreneur, right? Uh, what am I going to do? I'm just going to pick an idea and I'm just going to you have to get close to the problem. You have to understand the problem, yeah, right? So if I can't today design a surgical instrument, I've never been in theater, I've never operated, I've never been that close in the environment using a thing to understand the problem. But yeah, I'm sure I could design on paper, on Canva and Photoshop, a cystoscope and say, this is gonna have a flexible point here. Mm-hmm. So the surgeon will have ease of whatever in their wrist. I can design that. 
practicality doesn't work mm. right so you can't in the entrepreneurial world right you can't be an entrepreneur without getting close to the problem without experiencing the problem without speaking to users now in the corporate world in the health tech sector i forgot who it was again i think it was the founder of doctorpreneurs what was his name avi mehra avi mehra i think so i think it was him where they talked about understanding how the healthcare setting works in practice exactly, yeah. so when when you're say say you're ibm or deloitte or wherever you are and you've got a health based um uh, uh, what do you call it company as your client and they say all right we need you to go into theater you need to understand the theater culture mm-hmm. you need to understand how people scrub in mm-hmm. where people stand when you're scrubbed in how people have their hands you need to understand the etiquettes yeah. so i think so going back to your point and i agree with that so a lot of people that do want to leave medicine they all seem to have some sort of entrepreneurial spirit or force out they want to do it and i think you need to be a doctor, see the problems firsthand, which is like the founder of MediShout, who was yeah. in theatre, exactly. orthopedic reg, just becoming a consultant mm. and created a, a solution, right? Mm. And he's living that entrepreneurial journey right mm. now. I think if you look at it, and my theory is by doing F1 and F2, it's like a cheat code of jumping the grades and ladder compared to the role and responsibilities you're going to get graduating after medical school mm. compared to someone that comes in after a few years of medical experience with real life experience is going to be a lot higher yeah. they might even be your boss exactly i agree because they have experience they have genuine experience yeah. and they're more likely to get the position or the higher salary with better career progression mm-hmm. so i think it's also a matter of delayed gratification delayed you know that word where you have to kind of suffer for a bit to live better later exactly that and let's not forget this year if you if you exit medical school at final year what is differentiating differentiating you from the person who has graduated from oxford cambridge all of the universities in the country with english math science engineering whatever you're all don't forget if you step out of the pool of medicine you're in a pool that's even bigger Exactly. competing for those pwc jobs and whatever right think about it now you're not up against medic versus medic for that yeah. job you're up against every single graduate Literally. coming up coming through the ranks right so don't forget you, you might think are uh, stepping out of med school there must be less co- probably more competitive to get a job right um but respect to people who are securing these big big jobs it just shows yeah. that they've really invested into themselves in the five years yeah. but i think it's important though it goes to show the opportunities that are out there it goes to show how valuable a medical degree is mm. um but something else i've just thought of is basically so putting this whole strategic business to the side and all of this stuff right the passion the love for medicine mm. you know you were 18 19 you wanted to be a doctor you wanted to help mm. surely things can be that bad where you don't want to be able to be a doctor fulfill dreams right like how amazing is it being a doctor like it's incredible despite the issues despite the problems or whatever we can go on forever mm-hmm. you want you've worked so hard to get into med school you work so hard to get through med school mm-hmm. why not just graft even for a year do you know what forget foundation f2 do f1 have i think it's important and i think you will kick yourself maybe later on in life where you never got to be a doctor. You never got to help a patient or have some sort of responsibility. Mm-hmm. And the second thing that comes with that is a lot of people discover unfound passions, right? Mm. So there are things called discovering hidden passions, mm. which a lot of people discover while foundation training. So think of how many friends of ours hated med school, hated being a med student, graduated and now love the respective specialties, whatever it may be, like ophthalmology mm. or rheumatology. And they're like, yo, I hate med school, but I love this and they're excelling in it and they might become professors. Do you see what I mean? So, so yeah, I completely agree with you. Med- medicine is incredible. I'll, t- I'll tell you a story. So um, I was treating someone, um, uh, came into a and and stuff, and um, he naturally just hated the idea of hospital. They didn't want to be there, right? I tried to make him as comfortable as possible. Um, eventually, I managed to safely discharge him, right? Check this out. A message was somehow sent to my wife, right, saying, that was, I knew I recognized that doctor, that was my grandfather, 
and he was saying how he's never had a more pleasant experience in hospital and he was praying for me that that message blew my mind right because i was like just another it was just another patient in my in my in my head think about it you see patient after patient after patient it was just another patient right but i managed to get him back on his feet managed to send him home managed to give him a good experience to the point he's gone home and told all his children i had such a great doctor i i really enjoyed my time there it was actually okay and he treated me very well mm. that feeling of wow i managed to get someone home and managed to get him back on his feet and he's happy right he came in miserable into the hospital i think that many many times over is what a doctor experiences whether you're a surgeon whether who, people come in at their worst yeah. right abdominal pain clutched over maybe have you know, had a stroke or something and you're that person that they land into and you have the opportunity to help them and the the satisfaction of you doing that for them for yourself right for yourself and for them is unmatched i don't think any job any amount of money could ever amount to that feeling and the other thing to it is important money can't buy that particular feeling money can't yeah. buy that aspect of a job right i work with people who've left banking consulting accounting right to become a doctor i sit there and sometimes say yo man what's wrong with you you left all that money and they were like you don't understand dams we're so free here we have so much autonomy and we get so much happiness from our job as well yeah so it's important to understand that aspect of the job and one more point when you're 18 right you walk to medical school having said at interview you, you go I'm a musician, I'm a sports star, I'm this, I'm a podcast, I'm a content creator. I'm also interested in in the medical field. I want to do research. And then what happens is sometimes what happens is all of those things are drilled out and you you become this just bot that's been produced at the end. But I found that the people who latch on to the things that made them them mm. are happier. So the people if you look at the surgeon uh, on YouTube we were talking uh, commenting with um Vic Veer who you know very well, right? he was saying how happy he is as an ENT surgeon but he talked about having a side a side gig right he's a youtuber and it gives him fulfillment because fulfillment i feel comes from several different things coming together like a puzzle yeah, i agree um that's my thoughts on it what do you I think i agree with the whole fulfillment contentment and we never it reminded me we never talk about the people that have left corporate jobs and became doctors mm. i worked with a few of them in mm. Coventry because Warwick is a graduate med school right mm -hmm. so a lot of them had careers jobs teaching whatever yeah. and they said the exact same thing they were sick and tired of it they never got the satisfaction and fulfillment mm. that they found being doctors compared to their day jobs or whatever job they had in corporate so i don't think there's enough talking there's enough emphasis on people talk about how people did the other way around we also got mm -hmm. medics leaving medicine we never talk about people leaving the corporate world to become medics yeah. so that leads me on to my other question is Do you think it's fashionable now to leave medicine and say you've quit and now you're a consultant or you're an analyst working for McKinsey or Bain and Bain company or whatever? Do you think it's fashionable now? So that's it's funny you say this. I was listening to uh, Jeff Bezos talk about this, right? And he was talking about to, to entrepreneurs and he was saying don't follow the passion of the day. You'll regret that. Yeah. And he was talking about the gold rush and how people were leaving every, anything and everything, any job that they had, any lucrative job they had. they were leaving it in the gold rush era right and it's a, it's the same thing as the passion of the day right yeah, it looks like the startup world looks like it's this incredible space that you got freedom time money you've got everything right we're working 18 hour days flat i mean what's that mean is i left my 9 to 5 but now i work 24/7 exactly right and it's not a joke these 18 hour days are intense like we're recording now we're going to be doing marketing then we've got meetings then we've got product reviews to do then we've got there's so many things that you have to do and it doesn't stop we feel like we're never we're never um, stopping and taking a pause in this right so again the grass is greener on the other side everyone thinks that right so i do think it's a little bit of a hot topic to I say agree. i'm leaving medicine to go to this corporate fancy world and stuff or to do this and that and it doesn't meet their personality either yeah, exactly so there's the concept of um job career person fit mm. right the job has to fit you and you have to fit the job yeah. right like i would not fit 
behind a desk all day. I'd rather be a doctor. The freedom of movement is far too valuable alone. Just that, just that thing. What do you think about this current hype, this current thing of medicine is crap, everything else is better, let's all move together? What do you think about that? I think I get where people are coming from. Mm. I know there are issues in the system. There's issues in the NHS, in medicine, salaries, wherever, right? At the same time, it is a job as well. And no job is perfect in the world. Nothing is perfect, really. Everything's got pros and cons. Everything's got good and bad. You know, there are some amazing good days in medicine. There are some bad days. Same as lawyers, same as bankers. I've got lawyer friends, banker friends. There are some days they're like, yeah, we've got the best job in the world. Then some of these like, yeah, I'll do anything to be a doc. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think the key thing here and what we always say is equip yourself with the best skills possible to give you the best return on investment for your future. Mm -hmm. So you always got job security. You're financially secure to a certain degree. If that means doing foundation training, if that means completing a medical school degree, do your passions, discover your passion, spend time, sit down and think, what do I enjoy? What don't I like? Go out and explore, say yes to opportunities mm -hmm. and then hone in. Hone in once you know what you are, what you like, what you want to be and then basically just double down on it. And I would say if there's one way to look at it, just see foundation training as another opportunity you might say yes to. Mm -hmm. After that, even after a few months of foundation training, if you really, really hate it, you hate your job, you hate Monday mornings, you don't want to go into work, then fair enough. That's a different story. Maybe then you can start considering other careers, right? Yeah, yeah. Like Anya. Do you remember when Anya came on the show? Mm -hmm. She really didn't like medicine. It wasn't really what she signed up for. It mm -hmm. didn't align with her passions. And she then ended up getting a product manager role in a different startup. Mm -hmm. But she at least did foundation training. Yeah. She enjoyed it. She experienced it. She made an informed decision. I don't think you, it's like, you know how they say at 18, you can't make a decision. You haven't experienced life. So mm -hmm. how are you going to make a decision about what life is like as a doctor, not having done a single day of medicine? Exactly. Do you feel it doesn't make sense? I can see a million posts. Mm -hmm. It's like entrepreneurship. I can watch hundreds of books, hundreds of videos, bro. It doesn't mean I'm Steve Jobs. It doesn't mean I'm Bill Gates. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can see everyone's posts and tweets and videos and reels and whatever, mm -hmm. but you will never know what it's like to be a doctor unless you've been there, done it. Yeah, that's true. So it's, it's the concept of sometimes we're fantasizing about the destination yeah. and not what it takes to, to go on that path to that destination, right? So the startup successes that we see around us, right? You think the destination is amazing. They've raised millions of pounds. They're, they're getting acquired. They're doing this, that and the other now. But you forget the 18 hour days. Are you willing to put in 18 hour days? Exactly. So when it comes to medicine now, you might think, Oh, let me just quit. There's there's nothing. But you haven't even tasted it. You don't know what the destination is even like. It. You might love it. There's people I know. I interv interviewed um, Zahib the other day. When he talks about surgery, his eyes light up. Mm. Bro, on, on camera, his eyes light up. He smiles when he talks about surgery. This is a man I interviewed after a long on-call shift. Mm. Do you know why? Because the career fits him. Yeah. It suits him. It it fits his lifestyle and it gives him the satisfaction he needs from it. Mm. It doesn't suit our personality, but it suits him. Yeah. Right? And the idea, the, the advice that I give to everyone is go and taste it. Why, why yeah, are you going to quit? Hard. Right? So let's take it back to the question, the fundamentals that people are asking us. To medical students who are asking, should we quit while we're ahead? What's your answer? No, nah, definitely. Graduate, do foundation training, and then decide. Or at least, you know what, forget that. Do at least F1 to get a taste of what it's like to be a doctor. Discover things that you haven't seen. See what it's like. Feel it. And then make, I think you can't make a better, more informed decision than having done it, being there. Yeah. After that, if you want to leave medicine, fair enough. If you want yeah. to leave, you don't like it, your passions lie elsewhere, cool. I think that's the best way to say it from my mm. humble experience. My perspective is, again, the answer is outright no. But I would say change your perspective of medicine, right? Line yourself up to be a doctor as well, but diversify yourself, yeah. right? And if you need help diversif diversifying yourself, reach out LinkedIn, Twitter. You've got the avenues. We've made videos on this. Diversify yourself. So after it, you're ready to go where you want to go, all right? Mm. Next question, should they quit before foundation years? Yes or no? Nah, that's, that's an easy no for me yeah so, so i agree that's a ridiculous the sacrifice is, is silly like if you're thinking to quit medicine yeah <laughs> let me with a camera if you're thinking to quit medical school in the middle of your degree come chat to me i need to chat to you we're gonna have to one-on-one -on -one, yeah 
listen, we're gonna talk. We're gonna go out, have coffee, and we're gonna have a sit down. Yeah, unless something mad happen. But <laughs> no, like finish foundation training. No, no, don't finish. Finish medical school. That is the priority, man. Like, like you've got like such a golden opportunity. It's, it's a free pass, right? Mm. Especially if you are from a disadvantaged, poor social background like us. You know that thing you mentioned in the beginning, yeah? When you go to private school, when you do this, it's called social currency, mm. right? Don't give up all of that, right? Mm, mm, mm. If you know you want to quit medical school, mm. graduate and rinse medical school. Get the most out of it, yeah. then do it. And let's not forget, let's not forget, right? So again, where we come from, the lower social class, right? You, I talked about it again on my LinkedIn, leveraging education. You know... You can't sometimes, you can't buy money. You can't yeah. buy social class, right? But in this country, thankfully, we've got a free education system where you can fight for your position, mm. right? And then you can leverage that. You being a doctor, you having the letters MBBS or whatever after your name, you can leverage that to your advantage, right? Like no other degree, if I'm honest, right? There's very few degrees that are recognized like the medical degree, right? So it's a very powerful degree. Get to the end. Do F1, F2 to taste what really is being a doctor, like you might fall in love with it, right? Then the answer is, then sorry, then the question is, what about the guys who are now asking, I've tasted it. It's not for me. I've got my full registration. Do I complete CCT? Yeah. Okay, this is now asking, I guess, in a question that we're not even probably qualified, but we can give our opinions. Yeah. We can give our opinions on this. Um, or do we, or can we quit and go try something else? We can give our experience and our opinion on this. So we talked about this. I think we won't say you want to necessarily quit. Mm. You want to take a break. Yeah. So exit training, mm -hmm. explore your passions, explore corporate world, explore startups, side hustles, whatever you want to do. Mm. Once, now that you've done medicine, now that you've done corporate world, now that you've probably done entrepreneurship, you're in a far better place and a more informed position to make a decision. And then you can decide. If you if you don't want to go back to medicine, then don't go back to medicine. If you don't want to um, CCT and be a consultant, don't do that. If you feel like, oh, do you know what? The startup life ain't for me. The uh, corporate life ain't for me. And you start to appreciate medicine, yeah. then you might go back to medicine. So a lot of people go out there, do startup life, realize, yo, it, you know, it's not for me. Exactly. And they come back to medicine with a newfound appreciation for it and they value it more and they become good uh, consultants and get through the system. Do you see? So, yeah, yeah. so again, uh, I stand in in complete agreement with you. I think after F two year, you've got that real freedom. Yeah, I think F two is a base. Like, if 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 you're very sensible individuals, and I'm not very sensible, F two is a very natural career break. It's a very safe place to be. You can work and explore so many other things mm. and still earn enough to put food on the table, have a roof over your head, yeah. and not worry too much about bills. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. So if you're thinking about a career break post F2 um, and you, you've never stepped off of, say, a contract based job, I would wholeheartedly say try it. It is absolutely incredible. So, yeah, I think we've answered the question. I think we've gone through the various different points. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.